morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, you've bought your wide beam. <laughs> you've got all your stuff on it. Um, settled in nicely. You chucked your keys. Chucked them? What? Somebody chucks you your keys. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> and then you're on your own. Off you go. Yeah, they drop you in the water, don't they? Craneage and go, bye. Yeah. Uh, uh, no one tells you how to drive it. No. No one tells you how to moor it. No. Even start it. Or even start <laughs> it. No, I still don't know how to start <laughs> it, actually, which we discovered the other day. Yeah, start it up. Uh, um, what? <laughs> not sure how to start it up. So I saw a Facebook post, I think it's from one of our followers who's recently acquired his boat, mm. and he basically said, wow, living the dream, but no one's how, basically. So we thought on today's video, we'd show you how we do it. Uh oh, this is all <laughs> going to get wrong now. <laughs> so we've started up. We're running it in a moment just to warm it up. We always warm the engine up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll show you what we do. <laughs> okay, so step number one, how to start the boat, which I don't know how to do. Key. <laughs> into ignition but don't try and turn it on these ones oh, ours does but sometimes you have to push down a bit but that's ignition on so wait for it to cycle and now the lights are settled down we'll turn it again for glow plugs and we're going to wait for that top light to go out and then start like a car all up and running. Okay, gear lever. This is the Vetus one. So at the moment it's in neutral and you can feel you can't really move it. If you push it, there's forwards. And you pull it back and you feel it click, that's neutral. And then backwards, backwards. Now the more you push it, the harder the throttle will go. And you can just let go and it will stay there. So we'll come back to neutral, but also there's a button on here. So you can come around there, and you should do this before you start it. Push that, that now disengages the gears. So now this is just an accelerator. A bit like in the car, you rev the car up, but it's out of gear. So, and to get it back into gear, you just come back and it resets itself. Now, yeah, the trick with this is, when you are cruising and you're in forwards, so you're in forwards motion, you're slowing down and you want reverse, is to come back into reverse, count to five and then select reverse don't just get the gear lever and go oh backwards straight in because you you can end up damaging your gearbox and you really don't want to go down that road <laughs> and that is because um the the, the prop, prop shaft still is going forward yeah you're then selecting reverse and then trying to grab you've released the prop shaft the gearbox has and it's then trying to grab it whilst it's rotating and force it to then go backwards so it's premature wear on the basically on your clutch it's like slipping your clutch pedal all the time in your car and yeah it will wear out and it's expensive to repair so before we set off properly we're going to just show you the rudder and the controls for the rudder there is there's our little boat <laughs> now as i turn the steering it will show you the steering angle so uh, that's basically full over one way. And then we can go with the steering wheel all the way around the other way. And that's full your other way. So that that's, you know, full rudder. Yeah. And well, it's very handy to have because you, you'll be cruising along and you can see you're going off course a little bit. And if you don't know how much you've steered, you can always look down and see the gauge and go, oh, that's okay. It's just one little bit back to back to normal and then of course on the other controls we've now got our bell thruster ah! it's working so we can turn that on before we go anywhere so we press it once press it again and solid green light yay so 
so we've just gone past a yellow boy and a yellow boy is basically a precautionary boy so um, a warning of um, it can be um, anything really but basically to sort of avoid that area okay steering steering this boat is very funny it's, just, it's never simple is it no uh, it should be but if you think of a car you can steer straight and you can just go oh that's as easy and put your hands here and it'll keep going straight uh, I'm afraid these boats don't do that they've got a flat bottom so they sort of go like this and never go in a straight line so at the moment we, we're actually yeah we are pretty much going straight but if I just leave it the gauge is on zero so we are going straight but already we can see now the boat's doing this so we're going over to the bank over here and we are now yeah pretty much going over so we're gonna we're gonna correct it so now we can see it's coming back but if I'm not quick enough now we've over corrected so we're gonna have to go back the other way and this is what happens when you first get a boat you can see the front of the boat going left right and now we're over correcting that way and oh it's coming back that way and then it's like and this is what you'll end up doing and you'll end up doing this for about two or three hours until you realize to calm down a little bit not to if you do have to over correct you need to then sort of under correct very quickly so now we've we've got to go pretty straight now I'll, I'll keep it quite straight because we have got rowers coming <laughs> typical wouldn't it and also um, we've only recently put the um flag on the front of the boat. I don't know if you can see yeah, it. We yeah, we moved our we aerial mast to the middle, haven't we? Yeah, and we've now got a flag, just which a does one. help a little bit because you can see which way the um, wind is blowing, which obviously helps with steering as well, especially when it's very windy. And the other thing is as well, the more revs that you um, put on, the more responsive the steering is. Yeah, so if you're sort of new to it, it's better to go, well it sounds a bit silly really, but go slow. Just um, until you get used to it. Until you get used to it, because if you really throttle it um, and you make a mistake, then you're going to make a mistake at a... It happens a lot quicker. A lot quicker, yeah. The steering you'll find as you start to speed up. So the normal river speeds, it gets a lot more responsive and you have to sort of calm down a little bit. Yeah. Shepperton Lock and it was a uh, height of excitement because now our bow thruster is fixed. Yay! Richard could actually use the bow thruster um, to help get an on and off the lock landing and to go uh, over to the side. So in the lock. easy. Um, and then on that point, um, you do have to be careful using the bow thruster. Um, you shouldn't hold it for you think it's about five more than five we seconds. do about five seconds um, if you hold it and hold it after about 30 seconds that green light will start flashing red and basically you're overheating the motor so yeah just use it but don't abuse it <laughs> <laughs> whereas so if you've got a hydraulic one abuse it <laughs> a 19 mil one so 19 mil so it's quite hefty but you can see as well this is a 22 22 mil and you can see 
is bent. Yeah. So even with 22 mil pin, you can still bend it because of the weight of the boat. We yeah. were up in Prey and it's like the Thames Lady cruise boat went past us so close that it sucked our boat out and bent the pin. We got the 22s as standard but then sometimes you can't get them in the ground in the middle of summer if that ground's hard you won't get that pin in. No. So then you use the 19s which seem to go in a lot easier. Yeah um, and we've also got chains for Armaco which we'll show you a bit later. We've made it to Runnymede. She's left me alone with the camera. Right, we're now going to moor up. Uh, we can see our spot further ahead and should be capturing that on the other camera. We've already checked the river and it's, it's quiet. And we're going to moor up. So we're facing upstream. Um, it's a lot easier doing it that way. A lot easier. You can use the flow to sort of pull you in. Right, this will be an easy mooring, plus there's, there's no boats there up whatsoever. Uh, let's just get it over there. Take it down to idle. Just keep the nose over and it'll just pull us in. We should just drift in. And we're now, there's the bank and we're like that and we're just slowly pulling in. Again, keep, just keeping the nose across. You could use a bow thruster for this bit, but no need. Upstream, facing upstream is a lot easier to moor than down, if you're traveling downstream, because then you'd be in reverse. So, here we come, she's on the front. Again, the nose is still, still pointing in. We are about a foot from the front. We've pretty much stopped now and we didn't have to reverse, didn't have to do anything. I might have to just take the front, the side in a little bit. But we'll see how we get on. Let's steer across. No. Nothing. And we yeah, we've literally just drifted in. She's now off with the rope. And as soon as I get a bit closer, we're done. And there she is. So we've got Armaco chains, um, but haven't moored, <laughs> haven't moored anywhere where there is some Armaco. So we are going to show you how you would moor using Armaco chains on a bench. <laughs> Richard's uh, cunning plan. So here we are. Here's our Armaco. I'm stood on the boat now, so grass is boat. <laughs> <laughs> you drop the small ring down through the Armaco. You would then grab it from underneath put it through the big ring and there you have it simple then just what you would do then is loop your boat route through that and tie up Ta -da! Easy. but the main reason is you don't want to put the rope down through there and bring that back no because it'll be going it. like this and it wouldn't be long before the armor coast the armor coast really sharp on the edge yeah it would cut through this and damage all your ropes basically yeah you don't damage your chain cool so we're safely moored up 
at Runnymede outside the World Duty Free Centre. Free 24 hour mooring. Yeah, free. We free. like free. <laughs> we haven't been here for ages, have we? No, no. First time we've been able to get through Penton Hook Lock. Um, the weather has been strange. It's been yeah. beautifully sunny, then it's windy, and then snow, and then a bit of rain. Yeah, I had a strange sandwich, didn't I? Strange. Oh, yeah. yeah. Snow topped sandwich for Richard as yeah, he was cruising chilly. along. That's what I've just seen. What? It's just gonna go past. Oh, on a towpath. If only we knew. Here he goes. Look. Okay, okay. <gasps> Deliveroo! Deliveroo, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Not what we're having for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so like always, give us that little <laughs> cheeky thumbs up. Hit the subscribe <laughs> button for us and ping the notification bell. <laughs> Hopefully you found that useful and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.